diversity. Diversity is the differences in ethnicity, gender, ability, economic levels, and so forth. One of the things that drew me to Williams initially and continues to draw me to Williams is the deep commitment that Williams has demonstrated over the last decades to building a diverse, a broadly diverse community of students and, and faculty and making Williams accessible to anyone who can benefit from a Williams experience regardless of their background and their, their ability to pay. Um, colleges are engines of social change as well as social con conservation and it is fundamental to the, to the very purpose, to the, to the reason for existence of an institution like Williams that the communities that are formed there are reflective of the communities that are in our larger country and in fact in our larger world. Uh, that doesn't happen without attention. That doesn't happen by accident. So it's one thing to bring a diverse community to Williams, and there's clearly been a tremendous effort to do that. That's the first step in what is in fact a, a much larger set of commitments that one has to make. And the much larger set of commitments is having brought that community together, how do we foster a community that then functions fully integrated across all of the lines that define diversity, ethnicity, religion, gender, sexual expression, political views, all of these are uh, dimensions along which communities, no matter how diverse they may be, can fracture and split. And the, the, the purpose of the college has to be to not allow that to happen, to work intentionally and within the culture of the college to build a community that is fully diverse, not just a community that looks diverse. Culture and ethnicity. Culture is an abstract term explaining the ways in which we perceive, believe, evaluate, and behave. Ethnicity may refer to groups formed around national heritage as well as a distinct set of customs, a language system, beliefs, values, and tradition. Many teachers discriminate or use negative responses that can deny success for certain students who come from different cultures or backgrounds than them. Many of these teachers are only mindful of the mainstream culture or the culture of the majority. This is not the way teachers should be. It is important for teachers to encourage and respect ethnic and cultural diversity within their classrooms so that all students feel included. Gender diversity. Women differ from men in terms of variables like career orientation, family orientation, interpersonal skills, verbal skills, and, most importantly, occupational choice and earning power. However, there is little evidence to suggest that men and women differ in their abilities early in life, suggesting socialization as an explanation for these differences. Males are more likely to be recommended for special education, to be reprimanded and disciplined, and to receive poorer grades. Females are more likely to receive better grades in schools, but aren't given as much attention in classes, either negatively or positively. Growing reaction now to a new push in a California elementary school, along with learning their ABCs, first and second graders are getting a one-hour lesson on gender diversity. A California school has hired a gender coach to teach students that there's more than one way to be a boy or a girl. It is very important for teachers to protect the 
GLBT or the gay, lesbian, and transvestite students as well. Teachers can set the climate for their classroom by practicing gender equity. This is important to do since gender bias may change a student's attitude for the negative towards school forever. Economic level. Class structure is defined in terms of income. This is different from socioeconomic class, a composite of occupation, educational attainment, and income. The general poverty rate is 11.7%, but the levels of poverty within Latinos, African Americans, female-headed households, and Asian and Pacific Islanders are more prone to poverty than Caucasians. Research shows that students from lower classes tend to take fewer math and science courses and to be less likely to enroll in college. It is important for teachers to be aware of class differences and be sensitive to the students and parents who lived in impoverished households. This may mean allowing homework to occasionally be turned in late, practicing tutorial times during the school day, since some students do not have transportation, to arrive early or stay late at school, and many other, more, and many other examples. Under-resourced learners, eight strategies to boost student achievement by Ruby K. Payne, Ph.D. Millions of American school-aged children are under-resourced and at risk of failure in school. Measures of well-being or access to resources like material goods, relationships, health, and education are limited. For students, mental, emotional, relational, parental, and other key resources are vital to their success. Under-resourced is a way to talk about students who don't have access to a number of the resources necessary for school success. When you know the resources of an individual, then you can determine the interventions that will work best. Interventions that are successful work with the individual's strengths to enhance his or her underdeveloped resources. Ability. Different students have different capacities of learning. For example, a student might do very poorly in math while excelling in English. Teachers must recognize that struggling students need encouragement to achieve their highest ability and that students should never be left out of lessons because of a lack of ability. Teachers must cater to different abilities and learning disabilities within each classroom through modified lessons, co-teaching, tutorials, and special assistance. These issues are only some of the aspects of life that cause diversity. There are so many more types of diversity. Teachers need to learn how to promote diversity within their classrooms.